I have 11 children. Only two have not been arrested by Philadelphia police. This is black America. This is what happens. You have a room with overweight kitties. Hi. No, look at how big that cat is. We spend billions of dollars a year in humane services that aren't so humane. And we live in this country where we kill millions and millions of animals. When we say, if you have a body, you're an athlete, that means everybody. He inspired us to be able to bring something special for the masses. I think it's time that we tell stories about things that matter. We don't have to live this way. Things don't have to be the way they've always been. I'm going to be bold and say this can be the voice of this generation. I want to live in a world where my son will not be presumed guilty the moment he is born. The last thing I did was create the Malala Fund with the youngest Nobel Peace Prize winner, Malala. I'm the grandson of Jacques Cousteau, environmental activist, filmmaker, social entrepreneur and author. I'm a singer-songwriter. I was part of the United Nations campaign to end violence against women. I'm currently studying the intersection of race, education, incarceration at Harvard University. I started Gender Proud, advocating for transgender rights. I founded The Thirst Project, which today is the world's largest youth water activism organization. What is the show about? But inspiring other people to aspire. So I've been teaching at a prison in southern Massachusetts, and part of what that's done is really make me think more critically about how our criminal justice system works. And some statistics that I've come across are that in the last 30 years, our prison population has increased from 500,000 to 2.3 million. We have 5% of the world's population here in the U.S., but 25% of its prison population. So even though these numbers are really helpful in understanding what's happening in our prison system, part of what I thought would be helpful is if we go talk to people who are actually in prison and then also talk to their family to get a sense of like what the real human implications of the carceral state are. So let's check it out. We had a spokesman come in and speak at church last week. And he said, well, you know, how many people in here has somebody in their family incarcerated? Stand up. There was nobody sitting down. This is black America. This is what happens. This is what happens to one black American family. Standing in the middle is my friend, Jamira Burley. Her mom is sitting down. On each side, her sister and brother, there are many members missing. I have 11 children, and out of the 11 children, only two have not been arrested by Philadelphia police. Out of 11 of your children yes. total, right. only Nine two of, have not been right. arrested. And the only reason why, because one is 12 and the other is 15. Jail had them longer than I had them. Jail holds more than two million Americans, by far the world's largest prison population. And black Americans, well, Every third black man will end up in prison and serve a life sentence nearly 20% longer than a white man for the same crime. Is this inequity, random, or is it by design? Mass incarceration exists today because some lives have not mattered. We have been willing to dispose of millions of people, overwhelmingly poor people and people of color, and then lock them in a permanent second-class status, stripping them of the basic civil and human rights supposedly won in the civil rights movement. Jim Crow was the South system of racial segregation. Michelle's book, The New Jim Crow, argues that when this system went away, it was replaced by a new one, mass incarceration. America's public enemy number one in the United States is drug abuse. Starting in the 60s, the same politicians who said civil rights activists were criminals called for a war on crime. So you know, you're under arrest, you know your rights? Law and order meant cracking down on black people. This new Jim Crow, this system of mass incarceration, operates in ways that are eerily reminiscent of eras we supposedly left behind. Young people are born into families where their parents already have criminal records. They find they're targeted by the police, stopped, frisked, searched, and eventually they get swept in. My friend, Jamira, told me what it was like to get swept in when she was a girl. My mom was arrested when I was about 11 years old. I remember waking up one morning and her not being there. 
for 12 to 13 hours, we had no idea where she was. And so I, being the oldest girl, had to get my younger brothers and sisters up and ready to go to school. I think that day might have been the day that I became an adult. In your position in being in charge of the correctional facilities, what is your perspective with regard to this argument that mass incarceration is a new iteration of Jim Crow? Is there a disparate impact on, on people of color in the criminal justice system? Absolutely. And what do you attribute that to? We've seen a um, breakdown in the family. I think that's a, a key piece of it. What that view misses is that many families are destroyed not by choice. They're destroyed because somebody came in and arrested their daddy or their mama and took them away. Certainly, many crimes were committed too. The question is, do the punishments fit? Sentences in America are the longest in the world. Emerging science says our brains are not fully developed until we reach age 25. In a quarter mile, continue on to Greaterford Prison. But we are the only country that forces its people to spend their lives in cages for things that they did as children. Switch! When I was five years old, my two eldest brothers, Calvin and Kevin, were on trial for murder. They were at a friend's house, and in the course of them being dropped off, their friend stopped and robbed a woman and killed her. They were tried right along with the individuals who actually committed the crime. And it was just devastating to watch as two young people who were kids get sentenced to more than 30 years behind bars. That was the early 90s. Today, her brother Kevin is 36 and still in prison. <laughs> I am a totally different person. Oh, that's good. Cut your mellow out. Yeah. I can see that. How old were you when you were charged? Well, I was 14. You're 14 years old. I came in here, I was maybe four foot nine, probably 110 pounds. And at that time, I was still a highly impressionable young kid. You know what I mean? I wish I could go back and then do a lot of things that I did. But you can't. But I spent 36 years tearing it down. And they say what the uh, life expectancy for a black man in America is like, what, 70? So I figure I have another 36 to try to get it right. When you talk about corrections and look at numbers, we're the back end of the system. It's another system that's failed. You would say specifically that the criminal justice system has failed? Yeah, absolutely. Prisons, jails are overused as a response to crime. And it will take an interracial, interethnic, interfaith movement to end mass incarceration in this country. So what do you guys think? It's crazy. When are we as a society gonna choose to have this discussion? And to be honest about it, right? I think we're not actually engaging in a real conversation about the role that race played in the sort of formation of the war on crime and the way that like the residue of that war continues to strip black people from their communities at absurd rates. We can't move on if we're not gonna talk about that. We can't heal if we're not gonna talk about that. You know, I, I can't imagine a scenario in which we don't look back at the current, you know, criminal justice system the same way we look at like the guillotine, right? Yeah. That we would put a child who did something when they were 14 years old and like sentence them to decades and decades and decades in a cage. I think there are so many people who go about their life, predominantly, you know, white privileged people who don't see it. Don't, don't even know it exists. What needs to change? And there's actually a petition right now on change.org where you can go and sign and it'll go straight to your congressman or your congresswoman and tell them that like this is unacceptable and that like we cannot allow the perpetuation of a system that like subjugates an entire demographic of people to like second class citizenship.